Oh, that was wonderful. So we we had uh, Don't Worry, Be Happy, which is, you know, universal truth. And uh, we had Choose Love, right? So, uh, you know, I choose love. I like to say to myself, uh, let there be peace. I am peace. Peace is all there is. And so it, it really re reminded me of that. And, uh, and we had dunking in the water, baptism. I mean, we're done. Conversation's over. We've covered all the bases. But you know, I like to talk, so you can't go home yet. <laughs> all right, so hey, let's, uh, let's um, talk a little bit about uh, the stranger that approached the pastor at church one day that said, I'd like for you to pray for my hearing. The pastor touched the man's ear and said with a passionate, earnest treatment, you are healed. The next day, he saw the gentleman and said, how's your hearing now? The pastor, the pastor asked this question. And surprised, the man said, well, I don't know. My hearing's not till tomorrow. <laughs> the importance of communication and question asking, which is, uh, right? Multiple meanings, multiple words, multiple people multiple personalities uh, and it, it's a great <laughs> I love that joke it was a great lesson in really uh, taking time to understand but today we have a great talk uh, the great talk and it came to me this way and I said to spirit really and spirit said yes <laughs> so you're happy and you know it I you know this uh, is something that is deeply meaningful to me in my life uh, because one of the things that I discovered is happiness is present always because it is your true nature. It is who you are. It is the energy of, uh, of our beingness. And everything is energy. And we uh, know that uh, we know this because scientists have pr proven it, and I'm not a scientist, so I'm not going to go into it, but I, I like to research things and look at them through my lens and then see how they impact my life so that I can bring, you know, hopefully some messaging to you. But you're happy and you know it. So why don't we know this all the time? Why don't we feel happy all the time? I was uh, recently scrolling through Instagram because <laughs> I was happy. And I came across a video with, from Anaya, uh, I'm sorry, Asha Nama Swami. And she was talking about chakras. Now, I am not an expert on chakras. Most of you might know more than that about me. But something she said caught my attention. She said that your ego, personality self, is nothing but a vibrational energy pattern in play, always at a certain frequency or your orientation towards the world, and it is drawing unto you your experiences that you label good, bad, right, wrong, happy, unhappy. And in a moment, I thought, oh, there. It, it dawned on me, there's no Tracy choosing. There's this personality, Tracy, that was cultivated through a series of experiences. I was born with no name on February 10th, 1966 in Tachikawa, Japan, Tachikawa Air Force Base. And when I was born to my mother, I did not have a name. I was born, like everyone else, through, uh, unless you're a clone, uh, through experience, through the experience of my mother, and born maybe with these energy patterns already in place, and then gathering more energy patterns or adding unto those that were already present as I grew. And then through these vibrational energy patterns or determining my orientation to the world, I decided something about the world. And then I started to move through the world with this idea that um, the world was not a safe place. Now, this depends on how you were raised, of course. Uh, you know, my father came from uh, Scranton, Pennsylvania, and my mom from Newfoundland, Canada. And they both came from very poor households. My father's family was immigrant family from Poland. And his father uh, was a very abusive alcoholic, and he had seven brothers and sisters, and he was the youngest. And so he came with a lot of baggage, 
Um, and he, uh, in his desperate attempt for us to not have the experiences that he had, uh, did not like discipline. And then my mother, uh, also from a very uh, poor family, uh, in Newfoundland, uh, seven brothers and sisters in a one-bedroom house, but they had a lot of happiness. My grandmother uh, was my grandmother Annie was the happiest person that I knew, um, and uh, so these two beings vibrating found one another. And what I started to think about was how does that magnetic pull bring our experiences to us that we look at them through the lens and then give them meaning. And what I found for myself was I, I kept seeing the hurricane pattern with the eye and this rotating pattern. And as we move uh, through our life and experiences come and we're drawn to them, we see these energy patterns getting bigger and it's how we respond to the world and then once we become self-aware, we start to notice that we have repetitive patterns, which is the ones that we're gonna really talk about today. And the repetitive patterns, um, I wouldn't even, I don't like the label good or bad, right or wrong, but the repetitive patterns that bring us the experience that we often talk about or trying to find solutions to are the ones that usually bring us to a place like this so that we can discover more about ourselves. I, um, I heard this gentleman say uh, this morning on the way up, uh, someone was asking him a question in a Q&A and he said, how do I love myself more? And he said, you've already begun by asking the question. And so he said, merely by asking the question, you are, you are already a devoted seeker. You are looking to uh, be introspective to your life and the patterns in which you move and have your being. And then you start to understand that this energy pattern is in, is in play. And it is a very, very strong pattern because uh, if you believe in many incarnations or you don't, try to change a habit and not give it the attention of guilt, shame, or blame. Like try to change a pattern that you really, really, really want to change. And what happens, it, because you want to liberate yourself from it, you want more happiness, you want to know that you're happy. And once we start to look at those and try to change them, they seem to grow. It's kind of like the hurricane barreling down on Jamaica, you know, like as it moves through warm water and more attention, you know, we're all watching and this hurricane is moving, 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 it's getting bigger. But in the middle of the hurricane is the eye of the storm, the most calmest part of the hurricane. And we all have that eye, the big eye. And the little eye is the mind that represents these energy patterns as your personality, mine is Tracy, yours is whom you are. And if we begin to see that if we don't uh, start to look at how that was developed, um, where how it moves, we stay in a pattern of attracting the same things over and over again, and we call it being stuck. And we can't have an experience different than the one that we believe because the law says that which you put your attention to, you will receive. The law is impartial. It, it does exactly what you tell it to do, not verbally, but by whom you are, by your energy in which you move through the world, by your orientation in this life. And what I started to do as I discovered and started writing, I realized when I, I, I had this vision of when I was young and my mom, my mom called me and said, you know, I just worry about you. And I was like, please stop. I'm like 58. You don't have to worry about me anymore. But my mom really, uh, when I was young, you know, I, I just had kind of a depressive personality. I was sad a lot. And my mom didn't know what to do with me. And so I started to think about a child that sat a lot, what type of orientation would they grow up with to the world, right? They might develop some people-pleasing energy patterns. They might uh, try to prove themselves time and time again. They might encounter a world that doesn't seem like it's for them. Because all of these patterns come from the mind and we give attention to the mind, then the patterns are recreated over and over again. 
And one of the things that I realized as I, uh, you know, meet and talk with my teacher, he shares with me the minute you acknowledge, hey, I think this is a pattern, the work has begun. The energy has already started to shift because in order to uh, recognize how you are meeting, uh, the, how you are drawing unto you that experience, those experiences are there to get you to the point of total liberation. So those energy patterns that you call yourself, little mind, personality, can indeed can be elevated to higher patterns of energy and then you uh, start to move through the world with a little more pep in your step you start to attract higher vibrational teachings you start to discover different types of people coming into your experience and you start to move a little bit differently and you start to discover some of the things about yourself that were clouded over by the story of you that you have in your mind. And the truth is that we are all our own inner mystics. We are all here for the same purpose. We all have energy patterns and in that, uh, your word becomes law and your expression becomes your verbal pattern with those in which you meet. Now the truth is, is there only one because the one that backs all of us is the one that we're always talking about and the vibration of you, the maybe the chakra centers, but that energy pattern that's always running is a playing like a movie on a screen. It is, uh, it's bringing characters and experiences, and it is, uh, it is getting you to find your way back home, much kind of like the prodigal son. In your level of self-love, going back to that Instagram, in your level of self-love, that is where you, your level of self-love, the love that you have for yourself when things go right or wrong, the messaging you have for yourself, that vibration that you start to notice, is what uh, you are attracting. So you cannot receive more than your own idea of yourself. You hear that? You cannot receive more than the own idea of yourself. And I can come along and tell you you're magnificent and you're beautiful and I love you and, uh, and all of the things, but if inside that core, and you have not love bombed yourself, your heart hasn't exploded within you, then you are gonna experience life at that level of self-love. Your energy pattern cannot expand or express until we start to look at it. So if you stay in your current vibrational patterning, nothing will change in the objective world. And we think about this as a person, but as an entity in a building, this building has an energy pattern. Your job has an energy pattern. The people you work with have an energy pattern. And they're all coming. It's like turning, tuning into that radio station. You can't get to Camel Country from 98 KUPD. You just can't do it. But what you can do is start to look inside and understand that your word is law. To start to look at your languaging, the one that's going on privately in here, and the one that you express here and you start to take note of how you feel when you bring physical experiences when you start to attract physical experiences to your beingness you start to take responsibility so that you can have responsibility to the people in your life you start to recognize that you are truly happy that it's been there the whole time that it has never left that we uh, start when we come to a place like this, we start to bring up those traumas and dramas to look at. And if we turn around and not face them and we put them up on the shelf, you know, uh, when I'm cleaning my shelf and I'm dusting and I, re oh, I reach up there and I go, oh God, I haven't seen this in a long time. And I, I blow it off and I look at it and I, I'm like, oh, how beautiful. This is like our traumas. Sometimes we tuck them away and we, in our dramas, we don't want to look at them. We keep them on the dusty shelf. But when you're on a path of inner exploration, when you're on a path to recognize that you're happy, when you're on a path to see that bliss is your true nature, you begin to see that uh, these things that have been down here unconsciously start to come up and we have to love bomb them. 
We have to recognize that they were a pattern of energy that uh, drew an experience that maybe we weren't happy with. Now, we are on a planet, uh, and there are a lot of things going on, and it is a crazy place, and there are crazy things going on. So my suggestion isn't that you, know, you drew the abuser. That is not what I'm suggesting. What I'm suggesting is that a confident person that has resilience and uh, that moves through the world standing up tall and straight and doesn't have sadness as a requiem and, 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 and understands their true nature are less likely to encounter such individuals. But people's behaviors are not your responsibility. And I know for myself, I've experienced things that people would call, uh, you know, a very difficult things to move through. And then these things, you know, settle down and they inform me of the world. So then you begin to believe that you, the world isn't a safe place. But the world is a safe place because the world that you see is yours. There's no way you can see mine. You do not live in my head. You have not had the experiences I had. You do not have my personality. And you have your own vibrational energy pattern. And once you start to see this, then you can ask it what it needs. And you can feel in your body, the energy start to shift, and then you are guaranteed by your experience to know that you have indeed turned the ship, the tide, towards love. My friend and mentor, Sue Witter, just graduated, graduated ministerial school, but she's been a practitioner for 30 some years, and she said, when I walk into a meeting and someone is unkind to me, I immediately go to the inner work to go, how have you been unkind to yourself that you would uh, uh, hear what this person is saying or even acknowledge it or give it attention? It's time for me to go back to work and remind myself of the love that I am and allow that messaging to be that person and, uh, and, and to leave it where it is or to draw the boundary, uh, which, which we all need to be better at and we all can, uh, I don't know about you, I shouldn't speak for you, I know I can be better at drawing that boundary and as I learn to love myself more, as I learn to vibrate as a higher frequency, as I learn to let the traumas be the experiences of my life but not determine who I am, as I turn into the truth of who I am, everything starts to change and this mirac miraculous idea and feeling comes over me that says, you're happy and you know it. You're happy and you know it. You don't have to go back to that old story. And then you start to notice when, when experiences come, because they do, because that's the planet we're on, a school, then you, you can say to it, oh, there's that old pattern. Mm -mm, I'm not going to meet you the same way. I'm going to, I, my will, and my vibration wants to be pulled in the direction of the old idea, but I am right here gonna just be quiet, go into my mantra, and wait to be informed by the love of who I am on how to respond. And if it doesn't come to me, then I don't respond and I walk away. And yes, I make mistakes, because some of those energy patterns are deeply, deeply, deeply ingrained. And those are the ones that I'm after. And I do make mistakes, and I do misspeak, and I do, um, uh, you know, get fussy. Uh, live in a house with a toddler and a six-month-old, you get fussy. <laughs> but you know the gift in it? When I was driving up here, I thought, this is the beautiful gift that life has given me is that I am not, that, that, that the animal kingdoms do not have the pleasure of seeking the communion with God like we do. That is the first blessing. So how do we turn that tide and that ship? Well, first you're here, so you've already made a step to your own well-being. Second, you acknowledge responsibility for you, your life, your patterns, and your story. And third, you go in and you drop that love bomb on yourself, not the people around you. It is very good to be loving, but you won't have to be loving to people. You won't have to try to be loving. You will be love exuding you will choose love, you will be love, the love that already is, because you have done the inner work, because you have recognized a pattern. You will, as great teachers and sages say, be attracted to the right teaching at the right time, at the right moment, for you to express in a different and divine way. Your definitions are your law. 
You want to use words that mean something to you and bring a physical experience to you. By using words that have no meaning to you, personally or conceptually or abstract, you will avoid feeling your internal prayer and subsequently keep the desired reality from coming to life. So as we recognize our vibrational patterns and we understand uh, that there is a way to change them, and I'm not even, I, I want to be clear that I'm not uh, insinuating that all of us have uh, a negative reference towards life. I'm just saying that we all uh, at times feel unhappy. We all have difficult situations. We live on a planet where things are happening and um, honoring those feelings as they come up and asking them where they came from and, and bringing it out of the closet and dusting it off and love bombing it shifts the energy pattern. It turns the ship it puts you in the eye of the storm instead of the storm and if it's more of a beautiful life because you have a magnificent one kudos to you the same thing your story about the magnificence of life is still a story and at one moment in the objective world something can happen and bring all of that down my, my son came to me last night and said that, you know, he um, was laid off from one of his jobs and he had just did his budget and he just found out that he was $600 ahead and him and his girlfriend are turning the tide of the ship of their financial prosperity. And he goes, you know what? It's okay because I'm learning who I am, which is very different than the messaging that I would have gotten from him a while ago. So things, that we, we're always one thing away from something that takes us out of our our inner truth, our beingness, who we are, and throws us back into the objective world, the story. And so we kind of vacillate in the beginning, going back and forth, back and forth. But I'm inviting you to watch your words, look at your energy pattern, journal about it, write about it, ask spirit, what do you want to show me? What's keeping me from my deepest communion with you to live as you, by you, through you in all of my interactions so that I would meet each moment exactly for what that moment needs. Not for what the person needs, not for what the job needs, but for what is needed uh, for me to be in the highest communion with you. I was reading this book on the way up, Outing Your Inner Mystic by Donald Graves, who graced us with a beautiful talk. And I loved that he talked about patterning and he said, Positive languaging uh, is the most important thing because it in itself is a vibration and it changes something within you in the, in the midst or in the meantime uh, of m maybe uh, moving through. You know, d problems are difficult, life can be difficult, and we need to meet them, feel them, and move through them. And so he gives us this idea a couple of examples of um, mantras. So a passive idea would be, I am alive, and an active, fully vibrant idea would be, I live fully. Feel the vibration? I am alive, I live fully. You even want to say it different. Passive, I am wealthy. Active, wealth chooses me. You see, you can proclaim it. Passive, I am healthy. Active, I radiate health. These are vibrational statements that change those spinning uh, patterns within us and they start to move and change the momentum. And this is where the law of attraction meets our teaching. The law of attraction is always bringing to you who you are, not what you want. So if you want more wealth, then you have to vibrate at an experience and a belief system that would uh, support that you are worthy of that. And no one can give that to you. Do you notice the difference in your experience? Can you feel the active verb when we say that? I radiate health. Passive verbs, I am healthy, set us apart and give us distance from the immediate experience of your truth. So look, I would really invite you to take a look at his book. I found it fascinating. It's really a wonderfully written book, but it gave me the positive languaging in the midst of my patterning when I go back to that place. And it is a, it is a, it's a breaking habit. 
Have you, we talked about that, breaking a habit, breaking a habit with sugar, alcohol, whatever it is. I, I heard this gentleman, I really enjoyed listening to him, Michael Kahn, and he said someone came to him and he wanted to quit smoking. And he said, well, I'm not going to tell you to quit smoking, um, but I will tell you every time you take a cigarette, say this is the most loving thing I could do to, for my body. And he's like, what? And he's like, yeah. This is the most loving thing. What do you think that does internally versus trying to change the objective world? What is he doing? He's changing his vibrational pattern because in the vibrational pattern that is running that believes he needs the cigarette is no longer there. So the addiction is broken because the craving is a pattern of how you move through the world. So I started kind of practicing this myself as I, you know, eat, uh, I love chocolate chip cookies. Uh, but I, I really like, Fish and I were talking about this yesterday, sugar. And we were going, uh, she wanted to go for ice cream and she's like, do you want ice cream? I'm like, no, no. And she's like, oh, I shouldn't eat it. I go, but it might be the most loving thing that you do for yourself today, right? And can you see that? This is, this is the most loving thing. So I want you and I invite you in the week as you face the things that you wish to change and fall in love with the things that you don't, right? Like in, enjoy the parts of your life that are magnificent and pay a specific amount of gratitude so when we get up, we step out of bed, we say thank you. Thank you for this life, this experience, this existence. Thank you for the words of wisdom that have provided by many teachings. And then you go about your day and then you get to the kitchen and you want that cup of coffee. Maybe you're trying to get out of caffeine and you pick it up and you sip it and you say, this is the most loving thing I could do for my body. And you allow your body to change that instead of your mind, which is just a pattern of energy. And if we never move above the mind, or beyond it, then we are always subject to it. And you can change your mind about something, but you know as well as I do. Uh, you know, I don't know about you, but I've lost and gained 100 pounds over my 58 years of life. So we are now working from an energetic space that changes take place that we uh, do not have to, um, um, you know, pour so much. Uh, um, it, everything takes effort because we do have to change our attention of where it's foc focusing. But isn't it really more wonderful to give your attention to this is the most loving thing I could do for my body than to argue with yourself and go to the shame, blame, guilt, and hiding. And so there is a transformation that happens there. And it's happened for me, so I'm inviting you into that. Gratitude. The most loving thing I could do for myself today is... And then recognizing that surrender and accepting and even prostrating to yourself is the most beautiful thing that you can do. Because when you lay it down at the feet of the beloved, which is you, all things are possible because the objective world changes to meet the inner vibrational pattern of your world. So your only responsibility, and Ernest Holmes does say this, right? The, it's a, the mirror, the mirror that is reflecting back to us who we are. So the objective world is always a reflection back to who we are. So you don't really have to dig into your patterning, you can see it. Uh, but if the patterning or the objective world is giving you the experience you wish to change, then be gentle, be kind to yourself, be loving until you exude love. Like Jackson said today, choose love. Understanding these identities and these patterns will surely move you. That's why we're in a place like this. It leads you home to your highest self. You become aware that you are not the body and the mind. You are not the energy pattern. So then the question is left, which is what I'll leave you with today. If you're not those patterns and they are just in play, formulated through your life, moving, always spinning, giving your body energy, and I'm not really Tracy, I'm just Tracy's that pattern, then who am I? Who am I at the deepest level? And then that's where the true freedom is, is to let everything fall away and to walk and move and have your being in the highest plane of consciousness beyond the mind. Ernest Holmes says the divine plan is one of freedom. Bondage is not God ordained. Freedom is the birthright of every living soul. This comes from recognizing and transforming our energy patterns. And by releasing ourselves, we move forward to the life that we want. 
and we attract all that we desire because we have made up our minds about it. And so it is. And I will just anchor that in prayer. I'm going to wait for my friend. Oh. Microphone. So I just know right here, right now, the truth that has been revealed to you for your path, your story, your life, for you and for myself, this deep yearning to be connected and to commune with the divine is what draws us into a community like this. And then when we increase our vibrational pattern, this building increases its vibrational pattern and it becomes a vortex for all that is seeking the beloved. This discovery is a beautiful thing. It's a thing that lets you off the hook. It's a thing that says, hey, it's not my fault. It's a thing that says, wow, I'm free. It's a thing that gives us a little space to look and then meet that which we see with the most loving grace because you're meeting it as, as the highest self, welcoming it back in and bringing it home and nurturing it and letting it go as the error in thinking that it was. And as we let all these stories go and the mind falls away, what is left is the divine nature that you're happy and you know it and your face will surely show it because your beingness of life and love is who you are. It's what you do. It is your nature. Everything is energy. And as we become attuned, we become enlightened to the idea that the mind serves a purpose, but it is not the purpose that serves you and your highest idea. It is, an, it is a thing that gives direction. It is a thing that helps you move through this experience but it is not who you are. And I claim that I know that, that anything false or any idea abstract from this that is, that is getting in the way is gone, that the truth is revealed and it has crystallized in our hearts and, and it just breaks us open and, and we just feel the most immense amount of gratitude and love and outpouring to our own self and our energy soars and our life changes and we live just as we desired with the most magnificent idea that you are love and love is what you express and I release this into the law knowing that there is no error in thinking that can remove it, that it just deepens in your heart, that the teaching opens you up, that it brings new insights, that it points you in a different direction and your ship sails freely on the ocean of calmness, of harmony, of peace. Because as that nature that you are, Anything opposite of that is the mind, the story. And we begin to see that and let it go, and we just rest there for a while. And it is done, it is, as it is released, it is, it, is, it is revealed to you in your time. And I know, I just know the truth. And I claim it here, and I release it and toss it into the wind for it to never be returned again, and so it is. <laughs>